Okay, so this week is Neon Belly Talk. And as always, we're going to introduce a new position for some of the new players. We'll cover the really fundamental stuff first, right? How do I get into the position? How do I retain the position? So that's going to be the first part of what it is that we're doing. So Aaron, can I have you a head facing them so everybody gets a good look at what's about to happen? Today, we're just going to go from our standard side control. I've cleared the arm, one knee by the shoulder, one knee by the hip. I have my cross face, and somebody remind me, the cross face for BTT style, what do we like to emphasize? Shoulder. shoulder control on the chin. I want to make him look away from me. This puts a bend in their spine. It makes him weaker and me stronger. So let's just hit the cross face today, guys. I want to see us coming from a loaded up shoulder, making him look away from my hips. Other arm, deep underhook. Okay, so knee on belly is just what it sounds like. One knee on belly. Before I show this and get into it, I want to make sure we all understand something. If I put my knee on his belly, is this a point scoring criteria? No. no. Why? My knees on the ground. So this does two things. One, this robs me of points. Number two, it shortens my base. Now when he starts to rock and roll, it's harder for me to have that point of retention. So when we transition to my knee on belly from this particular type of side control, I'm going to pop up and it's like I'm surfing on a surfboard. I'm out here. I've got a wide base. It's hard for him to grab my leg and I have a good uh, distribution of weight and this keeps me up, my center of gravity up and driving down on his hips. Remember, if he can't move his hips around, I can keep him in this position. Okay, so there's 101. Starting from our good side control with the chin. There's lots of ways to do this. The way that we're gonna do it today is gonna be simple. I'm gonna set up one of my grips before I get into knee on belly. So I don't get to knee on belly and then have to hunt down two grips. So since I'm already here, all I'm gonna do is basically give him a thumbs up. I'm gonna loop my thumb into the three grip behind the neck and I'm gonna make a fist, okay? When I'm ready, I can go from, I'm kind of 90 degrees to him right now. I can do that, that's fine. But there is a little bit of a cheater trick here. If I start moving my hips up, making his elbow flare this way, it's gonna make an easier transition to put my knee on belly. And then as I transfer my weight, I come right in to my knee surf, okay? My hand was here. Yes, it's an extra post, I can keep this, but the grip we're gonna work on today, I'm simply gonna slap back on the outside of his knee, his outside seven grip. Seven grip being the knees, I want the outside. I don't want the top. And in this particular instance, I don't want the inside since my leg is not trapped. So all I'm gonna do, make my outside seven grip. Now, these grips, they're not getting grips for the sake of getting grips. I'm gonna cook my partner. So I'm gonna be driving my weight down on his shin with good posture. I'm gonna be pulling up on the neck, pulling up and in on the knee and bending his body in half. Now I can sit here and control him, not to mention, it's driving my shin in, starting to mess with his breathing, and it's bending him out of a position. I'm putting a bend in his spine. Remembering if his spine is straight, he's got a lot of bucking power. So all that talk, our first drill is just gonna go like this. I'm gonna transition into my grips and into my knee on belly. Good side control. When I'm ready, loop the thumb in the collar, pin it to the ground. Cheat my hips a little bit up, step on, come up, grab the grips, and start to cook him, okay? Aaron's job is gonna give me like 30% resistance. He's gonna rock and roll a bit. I'm gonna find my knee surf, find my knee surf, come back down. I'm gonna feed it three times from the right, three times from the weak side, and then we're gonna switch. Get the grip, cheat my hips, come up, cook, cook. Get my grips, cheat the hips, come up, cook, cook. When I'm done, come to the other side, do the same thing again. Any questions, I'll be around guys and girls, five minutes on this, ready? One, two, three, getting into knee on belly from side control. Okay, same thing, I'm gonna try and keep this explanation pretty short because I wanna get into shin and arm bar, and then hopefully we have time to introduce at least one, if not both versions of our baseball children. But let's see, uh, can we back down please? Same thing, we'll call that part A. We're gonna jump up into part A. We're gonna knee surf for a minute, we're gonna hold it, we're gonna cook them, we're gonna cook them. And then, pretty straightforward, just like I would do if I was in side control, and I wanted to go straight to the mount, once I control and I kind of pin them here, I would lift the hand up, bring my knee all the way to the armpit, and transition to my mount. We're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna hit that extra point scoring criteria on the way. I'm gonna hit knee on belly, just like we did. When I'm ready, my hand is gonna leave the back knee, it's gonna scoop under, and it's gonna bring his arm up. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of a 45 degree angle so everybody can see. So same stuff here. Control the chin, knees close, under hook. I'm gonna cheat my hips. Uh, one thing I didn't mention last time, I don't wanna flood us with too much. My knee on belly, my shin is covering from hip to hip on him. If my knee is in the middle here, can everybody see how I have a pocket of space right here? Mm -hmm. Next week when we run the inverse side of this, it's gonna give him a chance to put his hand on my foot and feed me off. So now, just one extra piece on part A, when I transition to knee on belly, I want 
instead of a tattoo, let's add a shoe on and shoelaces. I want my shoelaces stuck tight to his hip. So same thing, I'm gonna make that transition now. Boom, slap the foot, come across, come up, get my grips and cook and cook. Right now I'm mentioning cook. Here, maybe today, probably Wednesday, we're gonna get into, there's a couple things that they do, big mistakes that players make from the bottom with their arms, okay? I can hook and go far side spitting arm bar. I can come into Kimura's, but for today, I don't want to kind of overload our brains. So I'm here. I'm going to now dig at the elbow, put my palm on the ground. Some people kind of start to engage. So it's hard for me in one motion to come up here. Anybody remember the trick? If I can't lift him up, I do that. I do the Adams family. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. And then why does my knee land in his armpit? Who can remember? Because my knee lands here, he traps me in half guard. So if I clear the arm first, and my knee comes to his armpit, tap me here, he can't. Then I can transition to the mount. Mm. So just a really important but a very small detail. When I transition from knee on belly to mount, which is what we're doing now, clear the arm, whether I go, or whether I've got a hand finger walk, now my knee lands just outside. Now he can't trap my leg in a half throw. I can slap my foot to the mat, transition to my skydive, and hold the position until I can get points or stabilize. So all that talk looks like this. When we transition to knee on belly, make sure our shoelaces are touching the hips. Get my grips and cook. Oh, he didn't make a mistake with his arms. Simple and straightforward, right? Okay, five minutes on this one. After that, let's get into some of our submission series from knee on belly. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, so we've talked about getting to knee on belly, points of retention, and now we've talked about our transition to mount. Okay. Now, let's get into the fun stuff. Everybody likes to learn submissions and sweeps. It's the fun part. But if I can't get into the position and I can't retain it, I just keep getting pushed back down to like standard side control or my foot gets fed into the guard or something like that. So now that we've kind of covered some of those and we will continue to practice those all week, I promise. We'll go again. Same thing. We'll go part A, where I'm setting them up, transitioning to the on belly, getting my grip, stabilizing and cooking. Well, one of the reasons why, well, a couple reasons, I'll name them. So once I come in here, cheat and I come here. Number one, if I only hold this position for any less than three seconds and I transition to the mount, I don't get points. Remember, I have to hold the position for three seconds to get points. So I'm cooking him and I'm pulling, pulling and driving all at the same time. If they're bucking, I like to move people around so they, it's not as a predictable spot that I'm going to be in. If they give me a path to the mount, of course, I'm going to transition to the mount most of the times if he's keeping his arms in and framed or he's trying to play at my knee. But now let's talk about some of the common mistakes that the bottom player makes. Let's start We'll take it one arm at a time, okay? This is the onside arm. Why do I call it the onside arm? It's the arm that's on the side of my hips, the mass of my body. So that's the far side arm, and this is the onside arm. Let's talk about some of the things that this player can do with this arm. Sometimes they're gonna reach out and they're gonna grab my knee. No problem, I can grab the grip, strip it. Or if I'm here and he reaches up under my armpit or to push off me to create space, this is exactly what I want. Here in the mats, I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. All I'm going to do is leave the neck, grab the one grip, and again, just like earlier where I couldn't strip the grip, I kind of committed his hand. Same principle, different application. So I'm in here cooking. He goes to create space. I'm going to leave the three grip on the back of the neck. I'm going to hold the one grip, okay? Once I have the arm, I don't just hold it. I'm extending his arm so he can't have it back. Guess what's coming? Juji Gatame, arm bar. I can do this with this hand here. It's just a little harder. So a lot of times what I like to do is lean forward, which puts even more of my weight on my partner post. Between this post and this post, it lets me get my hips light and run my shin in armbar. My shin is in his armpit. I slide it up. I get the back of my foot behind. I drop my knee over by his jaw and I'm pushing and pulling. Now I can make the transition. And guys, there's two finishes for this. Once I get the leg over, I can lean forward and push my hips or I can come backward and use my free hand to control the thumb. So all that talk is going to look like this. I'm going to transition. I'm going to get my grips and cook. The second he reaches up, I'm going to commit, post, and go shit in armbar. Cool. We do a little quicker. And once you've done this about 10,000 times, like most black belts are going to do, you're going to be in here. The second they reach up, it's a very, very quick submission. Okay? Don't hurt each other. Don't break each other's arms. You guys will have the preference this time. You're going to do this six times. If you want to go three and three, fine. If you want to run all six from the same side, your choice. You go six, switch your partner, go six, 
See how many times we can get through in five minutes. Sound good? Shannon Armbar from Neon Bell. Ready? One, two, three. All right, probably our last technique of the day because we've got good bodies on that, so I want you guys to be able to roll rather than just have to listen to me beat your eardrums off a bunch of words, okay? We're going to run the same progression. This time I get in, and the player's keeping their arms home, okay? Which usually will let me have an easy transition to the mount, but sometimes I try to lift their elbows up, and they're kind of doing the chicken wing thing. Me, personally, I don't like to transition to the mount from side control or from any position if I can't lift up the armpit because they can use that arm to block my leg. Put me back down the ladder into a half guard. I did all that work to pass the side control. Why would I want to work myself back into a half guard? Okay, unless I'm trying to run a specific bear and bowl or a leg trap. But for the rest of us, the most of the time, same thing. Standard side control. Are there different types of side controls? Like Hezekatame's, sure. Our, we call our typical side control. Are there ones where we hook the hips to prevent the re-shrimp? Sure, but today we're working from kind of our fundamental side control. <clears throat> when I'm ready, loop, Shift here. Now this time he didn't reach up with this arm giving me the on-site arm bar. Later this week we're going to talk about what he does with this hand, posting it on my knees to give me Kimura's or put your hand on my knee. <laughs> Far side spinning arm bars. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can do with that hand. But now we're going to assume, we'll save that for Wednesday. We're going to assume I've got to my knee on belly. I'm cooking. I'm waiting for Aaron to make a mistake to reach up with either of his arm and put his hand on my knee. Hmm, he's a blue belt. He's got these tricks down by now. So, if his arms are down here protecting, I can still run a collar choke. They still have the fabric around their neck. So, baseball choke. Why is it called a baseball choke? It's exactly like I'm holding a baseball bat getting ready to swing. So, I already have this hand in the collar, agreed? And this hand is here cooking. I'm waiting for him to make a mistake. I'm waiting. Maybe I even try and elevate. I try the Adam family. He's strong. Okay. I'm going to go palm up. Me, I don't like to approach the collar right away. Can you already see the mechanics of how this is a hard feed? So what I like to do, I like to take the back of my hand, palm up, and I'm gonna slap him right in the middle of the sternum. Now I'm gonna use my hand like a knife. I'm gonna dig it into the collar. Sometimes I've gotta do a little finger walking, okay? But if I approach the collar from here, it's gonna be a really hard grip, you guys. So here I am, I'm cooking. He's not making a mistake. I'm gonna put my middle knuckle right in the middle of his sternum. Use my hand like a blade, slide it in. Get a good grip. See my hands? It's like I'm holding a baseball bat. This is why we call this the baseball choke. Now there are a few finishes from here. Today we're gonna to work our north-south finish. Okay, once I hook this up, a key note, if my elbow's floating right here, when I go to do this, he drops his chin, I'm gonna be smashing his face together, okay? So once I hook up my grip, I wanna connect my elbow to his sternum like this. Now, as I slide to north-south, my forearm, the bones of my forearm, are gonna act like a cantilever under his chin. So once I hook this up, here I am cooking, slap, grab, grip, just like a baseball bat. This leg that's up, I'm gonna set this on the ground above his shoulder, right by his ear. So it's gonna come in, set down right here, almost trapping my bottom hand. I'm gonna uncommit from knee on belly and go north-south, almost go turtle position. So as I come around, elbow stays low, starts to drive up under his chin. I come here and just like turtle, where I go down with my knees and my forehead on the ground, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this elbow is where all the magic's gonna happen. I need to come all the way across, loop over his shoulder, and tighten it up around. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, on belly, I'm cooking. He's not making a mistake. Slap the sternum palm up, get my baseball grip. One knee down, I'm gonna spin, and I'm gonna put my forehead on the ground under his armpit, and drop my elbow towards the ground with his paper cutter motion. And it can happen fairly quick. Cooking, cooking. Can't lift the arm, he's not making a mistake. Hook up my baseball grip. Get the choke. Cooking, cooking, cooking. Slap, feed, grip, elbow low. Spin to turtle north-south, put your forehead on the ground, cut with the elbow. Okay, and the whole thing all the way through looks like this. Baseball choke, because I'm holding his collar exactly like I would hold a baseball bat. Okay, last time, key things, keep my elbow low. Let it slide over his shoulder and try to come to the ground. Very, very last, last thing. Remember, this is a blood choke. If you have it and you're like, I'm strangling this fool, count to five in your head, slow count. One, two, three, you get to five, they're still conscious. You have either to readjust or move on to something else. So the time's not every submission is gonna work. Sound good? 
North-South finish the baseball choke from the arm belly. Ready? One, two, three.